My name is Tim Newton, and I'm the Product Portfolio Manager here at Hawkridge Systems. This is my 18th release. Uh, first release was in 2001 plus, when we kind of had half, half versions. So I'm pretty excited to give you an overview of the new enhancements. I'm a somewhat typical engineer. I grew up with lots of mechanical recreation, and uh, that inspired me to go to college and find a degree in mechanical engineering. And, Really lucked out stumbling into the SolidWorks channel 18 years ago. It's been a fun ride to see all the enhancements over the years. And uh, there's some stuff that still has me pretty excited this year that works. We're going to show you here in just a second. And then next up, we have uh, Glenn White on the line with us. Glenn, can we hear you? Yeah. Hey, Tim. So I'm the Director of Product Management here at Hawkridge Systems. It's, it's only my 14th launch event, so I've got nothing on Tim here. I, my first release was SOLIDWORKS 2007 that I was involved with here on the channel. And I, I grew up in New Zealand, and uh, New Zealand has a strong culture in engineering, things like the McLaren racing team and the Hamilton jet boat, and um, did a lot of work in my university on, on sailing applications. But when I graduated, I uh, started working for a medical device company, developing an infant resuscitator at the bottom right, but once I decided, oh, after about five years of that, I decided writing design documentation for the FDA was way less fun than playing with software all day. And that's how I found my way to SolidWorks uh, and then really enjoy doing things like this. Thanks, Glenn. Look forward to presenting this with you. So um, this year, what we've done for this, uh, this presentation is we've selected what we felt were the top enhancements, at least as many as we could possibly fit into the time we have here today. But every year, SolidWorks makes many more changes than we could possibly pack into a webinar. Sometimes it's the small things that affect a user's everyday uh, operation of the software and can be pretty meaningful. Now, every year, SolidWorks has a number of themes for their release, and this year is no different. We're actually going to start off with a video from Jean-Paul Obasi uh, explaining some of the behind-the-scenes thoughts that went into this year's release. Let me go ahead and start this up here. Ciao, everyone, and welcome to What's New in SolidWorks 2020. I am Gianpaolo Obasi, CEO of SolidWorks. Every year, we hear from thousands of SolidWorks users, users like you, and we get amazing ideas, insights, and requests for what's next. So, of course, we listen. We listen very closely, and then we deliver. Over this past year, you have told us you want full digital continuity, a seamless process that takes you from design to manufacturing faster than ever. You want the freedom to innovate more, and you want to work with increasingly precise simulation to reduce the risks of product failure. So we got our marching orders and we acted on them. And we are absolutely thrilled with what's new for 2020. It's all about digitalization and integration through a connected 3D experience platform to drive faster innovation while reducing the risk of failure. In SolidWorks 2020, you'll find three main ways we are giving you the solutions you truly want and need. First, the 3D Experience platform will deliver to you a connected design to manufacturing ecosystem, helping you manage every aspect of developing and delivering products, from ideation into the hands of your customers. You go from concept to completed product with unprecedented speed, and you'll do it easily and seamlessly with new and connected applications, both on the desktop and the cloud. We are delivering improved performance across the spectrum for stunning speed and unparalleled functionality. And finally, we are giving you streamlined workflows to accelerate time to market and reduce manufacturing costs, all while improving product quality. Get ready to dive in, discover, and get inspired by SolidWorks 2020. Okay, to understand this year's performance improvements, we're going to take a minute to review some of last year's enhancements. Firstly, a brand new graphics pipeline was added that better utilizes your graphics card. When turned on, when you rotate large assemblies, you find it no longer does the chunk-a-chunk -chunk rotation deal, nor the simplification where small parts are temporarily turned into blocky representations. It just works. 
This can be turned on or off in the options section and spent 2019 in beta, but it's now out of beta and on by default. Next, large design review mode got some great enhancements. It's no longer a review only mode where you could take measurements, section view, locate components and sub-assemblies to open, but we can now work in this mode and make meaningful edits. You can insert and delete components, use reference geometry and sketches, locate components by adding and removing mates, even take advantage of magnetic mates. It really speeds up the performance. And now in 2020, we can access reference geometry inside parts and assemblies. So you can use those planes axes to create mates, for example. Linear and circular component patterns can now be edited. <clears throat> and you can hide and show components using standard SOLIDWORKS conventions. But check this stuff out if you're having large assembly issues. So on that theme, another new enhancement here in SOLIDWORKS 2020 is the new detailing mode. And this is something that you'll see presented to you when you hit the open window in SOLIDWORKS. You'll see a drop down on a drawing model, a, a drawing file type, to go to detailing mode. And in essence, what detailing mode is, it's a mode where the, mod, uh, the drawing does not load the background model into memory. So we have a limited set of tools that we can uh, utilize in this mode, but the rule of thumb that I like to think of is anything that doesn't require the updating of line work in the model can be done. So we can manipulate notes and annotations. We can uh, move balloons around, change fonts, and do a lot of that kind of grunt work that we do on a model. And I've visited many, many customers who tell me the first thing they do in the morning is open the drawing they're going to have to work on that day, go have a cup of coffee, check in with their coworkers, um, come back to the desk three or four minutes later and hope that it's loaded. So this mode will let us do a lot of that detail and work, like moving and uh, manipulating views without having to have the model loaded in the background. Really quick opening times and um, really efficient performance. You're not carrying gigabytes of data and memory when you're doing this. So you can tell what's available to you by seeing which command manager items are not grayed out. Right, so we're adding new dimensions to this particular item. Um, add things like revision clouds. We can add balloons to things that are already represented in the bill of materials. And so this is a really big enhancement, I think, that we now have this choice to open this model in this way. When it comes time to save the model, it will prompt you and say, hey, do you want to go back and reload the model and update everything? Um, and we can choose whether we do or do not want to do that. And the other nice thing I like about this is there's no special save tactic that's needed to make this available, right? It's not like speed pack or other uh, light weighting options where I, I do need to make conscious choices. Um, I can say, any drawing out and open in this detailing mode and have access to this nice quick environment. Um, of course, we can print, we can save to PDF. Uh, you know, my gut feel is that sort of 90% of the work I do in a drawing, I'll be able to do in this mode. Uh, most of the time when I'm working in the drawing, the first 10, 15 minutes, I'm organizing the views and then it's just detailing from there. Glenn, as I understand it, we don't. Uh, basically, it's saving the line work to the drawing itself? That's right. So all the, all the lines are saved into the, the drawing file, and they're accessible to me to dimension and reference as I see fit. Does that mean uh, if uh, I forget to send you the model, you don't, you don't need that, huh? Absolutely, yeah. I suppose um, someone just getting the drawing file will have access to be able to see what you're working on. Oh, that's pretty awesome. So, moving on to PDM, and um, did you know that SOLIDWORKS PDM is the second most popular product used by SOLIDWORKS users, after SOLIDWORKS, of course, and it's really important to your design process to manage and control the files that you work with so that people are working on the right versions, you've got appropriate revision control. And one of the tools that's been really powerful in PDM is search. 
and we've had search cards in the past, but for now we have kind of a Windows Explorer-like search field in the top right of PDF. It's going to make it a lot more accessible, a lot more discoverable for people. And it really has all the controls that you want, right? We can define what sort of fields we're searching in. We can define what folders and projects we're searching in. Um, and if we want to go a little bit deeper, we can pop up the traditional search card environment to really dig into those, those details and control our search experience. Uh, we've got the ability to do multi-variable searching now, and we also have added user control over the order, the view, the layout of columns and search results, which previously were kind of an admin or a, an environment level setting. So giving individuals the control of how they search and what they look at, it's just gonna make moving around in your database a lot more efficient. Up next, a new frequently requested uh, enhancement, a workflow condition to validate the state of referenced files. What this can do is ensure that when you release an assembly, doesn't reference any obsolete parts. Here we're looking at a drawing referencing a collection of parts and assemblies, and we'll try to put that into an approved state, but we find that we can't. Now the warning messages let us know that we've got a child component here in an underchanged state, and that needs to be in a released or development state in order to move that file, the drawing file, forward. So we'll simply go ahead and move that file forward. In PDM, we've got all the tools right at our fingertips, the contains and where used information, making it really easy to locate that file and move it along in its life cycle. And now that we've done that, going back to that original drawing, we'll find we're able to move that forward. So years ago, our custom programming team created an add-in to provide this functionality and more. But it's really nice to see SolidWorks adding this functionality for everybody to take advantage of. Now, if you have custom development tools, we'd love to talk to you about those challenges and see if there's a fit there. I really like this new PDM enhancement, Glenn. Pretty sweet. And Tim, so moving back to SolidWorks here, um, you may have noticed as some, we're showing some of these screenshots, the, the interface has changed a little bit. One thing you'll notice when opening assembly in the open mode is the new slider to control the level of detail that you're going to load into memory, from large design review to lightweight, all the way to fully resolved. You'll also notice that as you hover over buttons on the toolbar, you're presented with an animated tooltip. Now for new users or casual users, this is a great way to see exactly what you're gonna get out of this feature. And don't worry, for experienced users who might find this kind of annoying or too much information, it can either be set to the default tooltip that we have in older versions or turned off altogether. But I love this uh, spline workflow. You know, it's telling you there that you click at each point and then double click to finish, just in a nice animated interface, hopefully keeps you out of the help file. <clears throat> the last big enhancement, and I do a lot of simulation, so I'm gonna love this day to day, is that when you're searching for materials, either just to get the, the view of your model accurate or get the, the density right, we now have search capabilities. We don't need to remember what folder or what classification we put those materials under. Just a quick search, grab the thing you want, hit apply, and move on. So that can be fantastic. That looks good, Glenn. You know, another area everybody uses in SOLIDWORKS is sketch mode. We've got some new enhancements that make getting your ideas down faster than ever, especially when using touch-enabled devices. Here you can see us using Sketch Ink. By just roughing in that geometry, SOLIDWORKS automatically interprets the slot. You can enter dimensions directly. No longer do you need a keyboard. Just simply select inside the dimension field and a little pop-up toolbar is going to appear, allowing you to enter that thing in there right away. Now, if you're not familiar with touch mode, it probably works a lot like you're used to. Here we'll use the stylus to drag this arc center point and inference the midpoint of that edge, positioning the slot. And you can pick up tools from shortcuts or command managers like you do with your mouse, but this new power modified tool lets us use gestures to really speed up the process. Here we'll see uh, us adding a chamfer or a fillet. By making a straight stroke, we get the chamfer. Curved stroke, you'll get a fillet. By selecting over the top of an existing sketch entity with an X, you'll automatically split that item. 
You can mend mistakes using extend or trim away excess by simply starting the trimming operation with a little squiggle like you saw right there. Items can be offset by using a double stroke through an open or through a closed contour like you're seeing here. And you can just drag to position that, and drop it where you need it. We'll go ahead and finish that off with a cut. And then we'll turn our attention to curvature. This is something I've spent some significant amount of time doing some surfacing work in the past. Uh, looking at the zebra stripes, we see this discontinuity at the front of our part. And then going into the sketch, you'll see some curvature cones that just magnify the issue. So those things are touching, but they're not tangent, nor are they curve continuous. But for the smoothest transition in 2020, we can now use a G3 continuity constraint. So that's going to give you the smoothest possible transition inside SOLIDWORKS. And finally, uh, making mistakes is part of the design process. But if you use the undo button a few too many times, you might find the redo button is no longer available. It was like it was modal. If it went into sketch, you lost this capability. But now in 2020, the redo button is much more accessible and you'll find yourself losing less work to this situation. This is just some of the ways that 2020 makes sketching fast and powerful with or without a touch device. So when we're working in assemblies, um, there's some new enhancements really focused around the QuickMate toolbar. And this is something you may not have known what it was called, but it's a little window that pops up in the assembly environment when you start selecting multiple faces. It's by far the fastest and most direct way to add mates to the model. And the capability of this has really been improved. So to start with here, by selecting two faces, we can go directly to a slot mate and define the slot position. That's a new addition to that quick mate toolbar. If we're doing a profile center mate, which puts the center of one face in the middle of the other. We can use that quick mate toolbar to flip the alignment um, and if we're doing a width mate, which is one of my favorites, uh, puts two faces on one part centered between two faces on the other, we can also here go directly to a um, flip alignment without having it. And what we're trying to do here is keep you out of going to the menu, going to the property manager, right? constantly kind of moving your mouse across the screen. And I encourage you to look really hard at these tools this toolbar and use of the control and alt key because there's a huge, huge time saver um, for these tasks that can be somewhat tedious. The last one that's been added here are limit mates are now available in this environment. We're going to add a li limit angle mate to this item and we can specify the normal, the minimum and the maximum angle for this right from that toolbar. Again, staying out of the property manager, staying out of the menu. So take a good look at that. I'm really impressed with what they've, they've added there over several years. Yeah, totally. So assembly patterns are an efficient way to put multiple copies and components into the assembly. And 2020 introduced some great new features here. Pattern-driven component patterns are now more intelligent. They now understand the orientation of whole wizard features that are created using 3D sketches on multiple faces. So this makes it very fast for us to pop in all of those fasteners in the right position as well as tools to control the orientation or the alignment method. We've got some nice enhancements with linear and circular component patterns. They're more flexible than ever. You can now modify each component instance within the pattern. Here we'll set up a circular pattern to pattern this fastener around the axis. And adding in the angular increment, you see it works for most of the fasteners, but there's two that, that aren't quite nominal. So we can now right click on this and modify that component instance and change the angle right from the interface. The same functionality exists within a linear pattern. Obviously, there you're controlling the length. But this gives you the ultimate flexibility when you have irregular patterns on non uniform spaced parts. Up next, mirroring components. Sometimes this option of using the center of the bounding box or the center of mass don't provide the right results. A brand new option to use the component origin makes the mirror component more robust for parts that are not symmetric within those previous two cases. Furthermore, a new option uh, with, rate, with quick access buttons to change the orientation of mirrored components is now easier than ever to use right within that property manager. You can see some great assembly patterning options to create more flexible and intelligent patterns and 
It's all over to 2020. Okay. You know, it seems more and more that um, I'm seeing more mesh files, whether it's from scanning or files that have been prepped for 3D printing. They're so much more of part of our workflows than they have been before. And we've had some really nice tools to modify mesh files without having to convert them to surface or solid. So we've added a couple of things, including the ability to add fillets or chamfers to, um, to mesh models. And then also the ability to add some sort of surfacing capability. Uh, in this case, we're adding an offset surface into this model. We basically want to direct edit the scoop to be a larger diameter. And using um, a cut with surface function or trim surface function, we can direct edit and cut away a portion of the model, retaining the full mesh. Now, mesh files, scan files, they're notorious for having holes and defects in them. So we also have access now to a full suite of repair tools, including things like patch hole, um, delete and patch, delete and fill. And so we can use that throughout the model to make those tiny adjustments. And again, without having to go through that conversion process to bring it back to a solid or surface file. No, you know, you're right, Glenn. There's been more and more usage of mesh data. The mesh bodies and 3D textures are a few of my favorite enhancements over the years. In this example, we're going to work this, this gear that was scanned by an Artec 3D Space Spider. I actually had my hands on one of these at the conferences recently. Pretty cool. One challenge with working with mesh is the overwhelming amount of detail. A brand new decimate mesh bodies command allows users to simply enter in a reduction factor, hit calculate, and it'll reduce the complexity of the mesh. And it does it pretty intelligently. You'll notice more details preserved around the gear teeth and less so out in smoother areas. We can now also take advantage of mesh directly when working with axes and planes. Using the select tangency allows us to get just the uh, mesh elements we want to include in the definition, in this case an axis, but the same tools exist for creating planes. That's pretty nice. Used to take some sketch inferencing and a couple of couple of commands to get that to happen. I like the direct workflow. Now that our reverse engineering efforts have been done and the model's been remastered, a brand new tool called Body Compare allows us to compare our reverse engineered model to the original mesh. That'll produce a heat map, allowing us to better understand where we achieved a accurate representation, where we missed the mark, or maybe completely missed a feature. So these tools just keep getting better, allowing SolidWorks to work more Efficiency, efficiently and with more performance on mesh bodies. So moving over to the, the world of surfacing, um, we've got a big enhancement to the surface offset feature. Now we're working on this uh, water level indicator here and we basically need to make it bigger. So we can use the surface offset tool, but it's presenting a problem. It's telling us that some of the small fillet features here aren't we can't accept that surface offset. And in the past, this feature would have just failed. But it said, there's a problem, I can't help you. Now we're presented with a list of the items that have failed and the ability to, to correct or ignore those so that we can go back and do some manual trimming. The other major adjustment in this space that you'll see is a change to the thicken tool. It's a great way to turn a, a solid a surface, sorry, into a solid geometry. New option available in the thicken environment is the ability to thicken both sides. So go use the surface as a midplane and thicken to, to both sides of it. Um, that was fairly tedious previously. All right, we talked a little bit about drawings earlier. I want to share some more drawing enhancements that should affect your day-to-day -day work. On a drawing, changing the sheet scale has always been pretty easy from the status bar. You can just click on the status bar and select from different standard scales. But we now give you this uh, control over the scaling. It's controlled by a text file containing the preferred scales for each standard. So this is update, put your own scales in there, make it your own. Now, if you wanted to add a custom scale, you'd go to the Sheet Properties dialog box here and key in the new scale. It was a little further than we'd like it to be. Um, so this has been updated. 
Now from that status bar, you can quickly add a user-defined scale and just key it right in from there, saving you a little bit of clicking. Now when creating a detailed view in SOLIDWORKS, it always doubles the scale of the originating view. And changing that specific view scale can now be done through the property manager directly, requiring fewer picks again than 2019. And up next, a brand new dimension type, the chain dimension. Similar to the baseline dimension, you'll start, uh, you'll select a starting point there, and then you continue to add dimensions between items of interest, and it'll chain it all together and form a nice stack of dimensions. An overall dimension can be added to define the overall, and the chain dimensions can be converted back to baseline and vice versa. And both of these dimension styles, the chain and the new, uh, the new chain and the baseline can also be used in the sketch environment. Next, we'll talk about alternate position views. Now, they're a great way of depicting motion in an assembly of, of, on a drawing, uh, but it was previously, previously limited to assemblies only. But now in 2020, you can use alternate position views on part files. So this is useful when you have a part that's made from another, like this cast component here that's been machined. We can overlay these two configurations and really give uh, recipients of this drawing the ultimate clarity that, that they deserve. So these are just a few of the drawing enhancements uh, that SOLIDWORKS 2020 offers you that will help to improve your day-to-day -day productivity and document your designs faster than ever. Yeah, every time we present this, Tim, it's always the drawing enhancements that get the most feedback and the most impact to day-to-day -day work, right? Hey, so I want to re revisit something was introduced in SOLIDWORKS 2019 last year, and it's the structure system. And Tim, I don't know if you're like me, but it's kind of scratching my head to try and figure out how it mapped with our existing wellness functionality. And as we're adding functionality to it here in 2020, it's, it's beginning to become kind of more clear that this is a tool for automating the creation of big complex fabricated steel structures. Um, it basically lets us define the logic of a steel framework by using axes and planes um, rather than individual sketch line segments to define uh, the definition of things. We have new tools for up to point and up to plane and align with sketch axis. But you can see how we've created what we call primary members. Then the creation of the secondary cross members is as simple as picking the planes at which we wish them to to sit. Uh, we've got the ability to control the section of that secondary member. We've got the ability to control the position of where that section lines up relative to the plane. In SOLIDWORKS 2020, primary and secondary members can now be split during creation. Right, so we've got this cross beam here that intersects with the two um, horizontal beams. We can come in and choose how that split order happens and um, control that right to our design specification. When we're finished with the basic structural member, we move into the coordinate management tool. It's going to let us explicitly control at a system or an individual joint level um, the corner trims. And we can get into some really complex, really um, intricate trim patterns to make sure we get it exactly right. Now the cool thing about the structure system is when we go to the kind of overall general model, it's one entity in the tree. So things like a circular pattern to reduce the shape that you saw right up front, it's just a case of patterning that single feature. If we're using traditional weldments, we have to pattern individual bodies. So if I add gussets or foot plates, I've got to manually add those to the pattern. They're part of the structure system. Um, it becomes very easy to replicate those. And then we can also go in and create secondary members between elements but, or between structure systems. So these cross members here have again been automatically created based on planes and references to the original primary members. Um, with complete control over trim and corner options. And again, 
we can control that intelligence when we pattern these around to produce the entire uh, finished object. So if you are working with really complex structural skill systems, this is something to really take a close look at. You'll find more information in the What's New document under Structure System, um, but it's a really interesting new workflow. Oh, it's pretty cool. A SOLIDWORKS simulation is a massively popular tool. It helps users gain insight during the design process. I really couldn't imagine designing without it. In 2020, we have some nice enhancements. We can now selectively choose between a high quality and a draft quality mesh on a part-by-part -part basis in the assembly. This means we can focus our attention on the components we're most concerned about and save a bit of time on the ones we aren't. In the end, we'll get higher quality results in less time. Bolted connections also got a nice enhancement. Previously, they were always treated as rigid. And while the bolt forces, things like axial, shear forces, were always accurate, the distribution of those forces back onto the structure was sometimes compromised a bit. Here in front, you see the rigid. In the back, we see a more realistic stress distribution from the distributed connection. So some great tools in simulation. All right, there's more and more 3D printing, and SOLIDWORKS 2020 is, is right there to embrace the growth of of this prototyping and even production technology. The print 3D environment, direct print from the SOLIDWORKS model, now allows us to sort through um, a bunch of common printers, and we recommend HP and Mark Forge printers. We can add those to our favorites, and then we'll have accurate information about the build volume of those printers built right in. Once you've picked one of those, and selected how it's oriented to the model, it'll show you what's going to fit in the build volume and give you choices to manipulate the position on the screen and even orient to fit to get that part printed. Um, it supports uh, telling you what faces will require support material, graphical representations of striation lines, and even generate slice layers without the need to export and use a secondary tool. That slice information is stored with the model, and which means we can save it out to a printing file such as 3MF if your uh, model support, if your printer supports that. Now, if you don't have a 3D printer, don't worry. From the right-hand panel, of the 3D Experience Marketplace, and the Make environment, there's a direct connection to request quotes for 3D printing from material suppliers, because it captures a ton of information about the model and how it's oriented and how much material it has, you're going to get a very accurate quote with um, minimal back and forth. And it uh, gives you a choice of service providers that are registered for this service. Certainly recommend checking that out. Awesome. Next up is 3D Interconnect, which has really changed the way we work with non-native or neutral CAD files allowing us to directly reference those without importing them and then converting them into a SOLIDWORKS equivalent that we can manage. So we get some new workflows in 2020. Um, much like we can use Windows Explorer to drag and drop SOLIDWORKS files into an assembly, we can now use 3D Interconnect to do the same thing. Here we'll drag in the step file, and once inserted, we're going to mate that into place using a profile center mate. Well, that was a great addition a couple of years ago, Glenn. That, that one mate fully defines the position of that component, just that fast. Absolutely. Um, with 3D Interconnect in the tree over there, you can see some little green arrows. Those indicate that that model is connected. So if I was to get a new version of that step file, that can be updated in SOLIDWORKS. We also see some new support for 3D DXF, DWG, and IFC class files. Okay, so I've saved the best for last. Has anyone ever worked with springs or um, other components that are flexible? They, they deform as your model operates. It's been really tricky to, to manage that in the past. We've had to rely on things like uh, configurations. So with the OMAX uh, tilter jet head here, the model has some inherent movement to it. And that gets a little more complicated when we try and put our uh, actuator cover, our bellows, onto this model. Because the nominal shape of the object that we wish to add um, will change as the system moves. 
So you can see on the screen here the nominal shape of the object, but now we have a new button, Make Part Flexible. It's got some basic setup in the part file where we can define a new reference in the assembly and it will deform, um, mathematically deform the part such that when the model moves, the part will update. Um, you know, Glenn, I've done similar things as this, but what I found was so challenging is when I had other instances. But with this functionality, I can easily remap another instance of that boot to the other side without creating a whole bunch of configurations. Exactly. So now we've got both of those bellows um, updating. And you can see some ideas of different workflows, different areas, things like springs that might make sense for this. Um, you know, great for design documentation and other adjustments where you know, that nominal shape just doesn't look right. Yeah, that um, you know, kind of brings us to the end. I think you know, we shared a lot of different new enhancements, some things I'm pretty excited about. You know, that, that structural system, I'm gonna, I'm gonna definitely give that a shot next time I, I run into a design challenge like that. And I really look forward to the, or the uh, flexible components. Been doing a lot of workarounds for years on that. Look forward to just kind of working through that straight away. Now, we'd certainly like to hear from you if you have any questions. We, we know we move pretty fast through that. So again, look at the resources, join one of our subsequent webinars. Um, but we did want to give you a taste of all that we think is really important in SolarWorks 2020. We'll be monitoring the, the question panel here for, for a little bit. So feel free to type something in. Um, but also don't hesitate to get in touch if you have questions. A support line is on our website. Um, we're, we're here to help. And I guess one last logistical thing is that SolarWorks 2020 is available for download already. If you go to the SolarWorks customer portal, you'll see uh, SP0 currently available. We must be only a couple of weeks away from, from SP1 being launched also. Yeah, well, thanks, Glenn. I appreciate it. And thank you all so much for joining us. And we look forward to doing this again very soon.